So, hello and welcome back to my Let's Develop Conway's Game of Life. First of all, I want to thank all my friends and colleagues who gave feedback on my first episodes. I promise that I try to uh, consider your feedback to, uh, in order to improve my uh, Let's Develop episodes. Uh, one of the things I did in response to the feedback is was uh, actually configuring a bigger font size for the Java editor so it's easier for you to follow uh, what I'm typing in the YouTube videos. Um, another thing I did was place all my code in a GitHub repository. It's a public GitHub repository. I'm going to place the URL in the show notes and I'm going to do a commit after every episode so that you can browse the source code I used and actually play around with it if you want to. Okay, that much for this. Let's start with a new development. Um, as you remember, hopefully, in the last episodes I implemented the core rules of Conway's Game of Life. And, of course, I covered all these rules with tests. What I want to do now is create the environment these cells lived in. And... Uh, as you find by Converse Game of Life, this environment is called the universe, and the universe is actually a grid of cells. So that's what I'm going to create now, and again, I'm going to start with a test. So I create the universe test, and I create in the universe test, now of course I have to import this one, yep. Um, I'm going to create the first test before I write any productive code. And what I was actually asked over the first episodes is about how I name my test methods. And what I usually have in mind is I have a target class, which I'm going to test. In this case, it's the universe. And I want to show that the universe fulfills some property. So I write my test names in the form that say the universe should remember its initial state. Actually, it should it shouldn't remember it, it should store it. So my idea is that I'm going to initialize the universe with some initial state, the seed, and uh, initially the universe should remember that before I do any updates. So first thing I need to do, of course, I need to create a universe and this universe does not yet exist. So I'm going to create the universe class just by a simple quick fix. And that being done, I want to give it its initial state. And as, as I already said, the, the state of the universe is actually a grid of cell states. So the simplest thing I can think of to represent the grid of cell states is just a multidimensional array of cell state instances, which I can create like this. And of course I need to import. But actually there's no, neither the quick fix nor the auto import uh, work, seem to work for inner classes. So game of life cell cell state now I've imported this and now it works nice so I want to define these grids like saying cell state life for the uh, cell in the upper left corner and cell state dead for the cell to the right of it and cell state alive again to the cell on the right of that and then I'm going to duplicate these and okay in the second row uh, this one is dead and this one is dead too and this one is dead but this one is alive just creating a random a random field array to see if this is going to be stored um, First thing I have to do, of course, with a quick fix is to create this specific constructor. I'm not going to implement anything since the, the generation I just did fulfills my test. 
Okay, now, um, I don't really like how this looks because uh, the cells are not aligned, so it's kind of hard to see which cell is actually alive and which one is dead. So I'm going to use a little trick here. Just say, okay, I factor out a constant for life, which is named x, and I factor out a constant for uh, the dead cells, which I'm going to name big O, and I think that this is really much nicer to read, so I can just see, okay, wherever there's an X, there's an X, it's an alive cell, and wherever there's a big O, it's a dead cell, um, and they're actually neatly aligned, and I can see it. I like that. So, yeah, let's continue. Assign this to a local variable, UUT, and say, okay, from the UUT, we want to get the state. That method does not exist, so I'm going to create it with quick, and it is supposed to return actually the cell state as I passed it in. Okay, that's for the implementation. I can assign this uh, again to a local variable, with it, which is the actual value. I want to have this seed I, in, I put in as, uh, I'm going to call it original. It's also my expected state, but in this case it's original, so I kind of like um, having these three possibilities to original if there's something I put into and it's supposed to be unchanged and the expected if there is something I did not put into but I expect the unit under test to uh, actually generate and of course the actual is what I get from the unit under test. Okay, now um, I want to do essay assert array equals of the original and the actual. Good. Now there's one thing I really don't like about the default settings in Eclipse is that I cannot actually import these. Neither the quick fix nor uh, the, the code completion offers me imports for the asset array equals just because this is a static import and Eclipse does not provide that by default. But fortunately we can configure that. So, if I go to the properties, there's a thing called Content Assist, which you can find for the Java editor, under editor, Content Assist. There are two settings actually I have to check. The first is that we use static imports, like here. This needs to be checked. Normally it is in the default settings. And the other thing is to properly configure the favorites. And here I just say, okay, give me a type and I want it to be a genuine assert, this one. And now you see here that he added for me the org genuine assert star uh, import, and as quick as that, I get my autocompletes. Um, and if I now remove all the thing he completed too much, I get an auto import for the static uh, import asset array equals, which is really nice. Okay, so now I'm going to run these tests and I expect actually that they fail, which they do. This is really nice. Okay, let's go for the implementation. I know that the easiest thing would be to store this cell state uh, in a field and just to return this same, the same cell state. But I also know that this is not what I want to have in the end. So um, to divide this implementation into multiple steps, I want to do this uh, conversion from cell state to actual cells uh, right now, and of course the conversion back for the for the output. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new cell array of the same size as the cell state samsters length give this uh, stupid me what did I do here um, this is actually the state 
am I going to yeah I'm, I'm going to call this state so this is a private cell array array state is a field and I'm going to assign this here and now I'm going to implement the conversion which says okay for every row starting by zero as long as row is smaller than the number of rows in uh, in my input value of course oops it's not e it's row I'm going to first create in the respective row I'm going to create the cell array with cell states row dot length so I'm exact I'm going to copy exactly the size of the input array and I'm going to say okay for every column starting with zero again as long as column is smaller than states row length why did I miss something? It's the S over here. Length and column plus plus. I'm going to iterate over everything and set the state uh, state row call to a new cell which I feed with the cell states row call. Cell states. Okay, so this is the conversion into one direction and if I implement the conversion to the other direction and return the result here, this should be exactly what I put in. So in this case it's going to be local variable cell state multidimensional array cell states is a new cell state array with a size of this one so I'm actually I'm going to copy this one I know I know that copy paste programming is really bad but in this case it really saves me a lot of effort if I just try to exchange every cell state in here by state and then I'm going to exchange every state in here at least every original one um, by uh, cell states this one works and this is of course state row call punct get state okay and actually what happened now is that I am in need of some functionality actually this get state method um, of another unit so in order for me to complete this test I actually need to extend another unit which means I'm going to extend the tests of the other unit which is actually fairly simple I'm going to give this another test and say okay public void should uh, return its state so my assumption is that if I create a cell with a life state then I can assert equals that a life is the UUT's cell state. Since the method does not exist, I'm going to create it. It's going to return a cell state and of course it's just going to return the state of this cell. Nice and easy. Does this still run? Hey, I got this test to run. And actually, I think I'm going to do another parameterized test for this one, which is the first is going to have a life in here, and the second is going to have dead in here. Dead, this 
that's the one I wanted to have it. So there's just one string, a string is written big in Java, good boy, and it's the initial one. So I'm going to create the cell state from the string value initial and I'm going to call this one Ooh, what happened here? Uh, I just mistyped the name up here. Um, I'm going to take this original original uh, it's so nice if you're able to type original original as I said and I want the original to be the <laughs> how many times can you mistype the word original okay I'm going to change it like this so now we're going to check both cases which hopefully works okay so it works I extended my cell unit and now I can use this here and actually with this implementation also my universe test should work at least I hope that it's going to work and actually it does Nice, so we implemented the first part of our universe functionality. I like this. Um, next thing I want to do, want to check is that the universe can actually advance in its state. So, having a look at the clock, I actually think that quite some time passed. I'm going to stop here for this episode and going to continue next time. So, see you there.